So today's the day I get to uh, saw the shape of the blade. I'm a little apprehensive about that because of the work I did before and I was getting a little off the line. So I came up with a clever idea of making a guide. You can see how this has got a little bit of an angle to it. So I'll use that as a guide when I'm sawing. So instead of sawing up and down, I'll be sawing at an angle. I'll be clapping this to the piece. And in a little test run, I noticed that as I clamp it to the piece, the line disappears because it's on the line. If I can see the line, it's not in enough. And if it's over the line, maybe it's too far over. So what I'm gonna do is make a second line, you know, maybe a 16th or so to the, uh, the first line parallel to it. So I've got my piece up on blocks now. I've got it clamped down. And I will just, just do that by eye. And so when I clamp this down to saw, I'll make sure that I can see the outer line. That way I know that it's all good. So before cutting the, uh, the shape of the blades out, I'm gonna do something, well, frankly, a little silly. It's completely unnecessary. Uh, in the book, Brian recommends, if you're using a bandsaw, which I'm not, to cut a hole, four holes, right at the loom and he says uh makes it easier to cut the paddle if using a jigsaw or a bandsaw i'm not doing that I'm using a handsaw it leaves a nice curve at the shoulder to loom junction that makes shaping the shoulders easier later on so i'm going to claim that's what I'm, why I'm doing it the real reason i'm doing it is that i have these guys one of these we don't know which one is my wife's grandfather so using that is is really kind of cool uh, this one doesn't appear to have any maker's marks on it, trademarks or anything. I have no idea what it is. Um, I wish I kind of knew what it was. It'd be fun. Uh, it looks well used. This one is, well, it has a mark, so I'm going to use that one. This is by the Miller's Falls, made in USA. It's a 2 0 1. And I guess we can Google and figure out what that is. But I was curious about Miller's Falls. There's a town just south of us, about 45 minutes away, uh, called Miller's Falls. And sure enough, that's where this was made. Miller's Falls Company is a tool manufacturing company based in Miller's Falls, Massachusetts. Established in 1868. Greenfield factory burnt down, reorganized. Merged with Bacchus Vice Company in 1872 to form Miller's Falls Company. So since this says Miller's Falls on it, this is certainly made after 1872. Uh, there's more history, 1931, 1962, part of it, Ingersoll ran, so on. So why not have a bit of fun? Uh, I did make a, uh, a test hole so I don't make a fool of myself too much, and it's up. It makes you appreciate power drills, I can tell you that. But let's just go have some fun, see what happens. I want to place this very carefully. Oh, this is what's called a, uh, how do you pronounce that? Uh, Forstner bit. Okay, this is, if you don't know, is what's called a Forstner bit. It has a sharp point in the center to, so you can center it, and nice cutting blades. If you just are used to cheap drills, you'll have something that looks like this. Uh, I think this is called a spade bit. These leave really nasty holes. You know, if you're trying to drill holes because you're making a deck and putting a carriage bolt through, this is fun. If you're trying to make to find woodworking, you need one of these. So, so let's, I won't be able to sit for this, that's for certain. Okay, and I noticed in the practice one that pushing down hard was bad, it just would bind up. So we get some speed going. See as I push down, that's when it jams. The left 
intended is weird. I'm feeling down below for when the point comes out because I don't flip the piece over so I don't get any tear out. I know I'm close because the wood down there is now warm. So I'm close. That's, that's actually kind of cool. Hey, I started feeling it about 30 seconds ago. I can feel a little bump there now, so I'm going to flip it over. This may not have been the best idea because it's it's jumping and moving around and tearing out over here. I want to flip it back over. Okay. <laughs> I can't give it through. There's certainly tear out over there. I don't like that. Bad tear out. Uh -oh. But that's part I'm trimming, I bet. Oh, you probably want to see it. <laughs> Mark, 16 minutes on that video, and I only spent two or so talking. The house we live in was built in the 1860s. So we know they didn't have power tools back then. They had, they had water-driven tools at the mill for, for some of the lumber, but the people that assembled this used power tools. And man, if they had the drill, I <laughs> mad appreciation for them. I'm not going to do the other four. That's a lot of work. My hand's cramping up. And what I'll do is, when I shape this, I'll do one with the hole and one without the hole and see how it goes. If it's not dramatically better, I'm not gonna bother drilling over here. But I'm glad I used my Miller's Falls drill. Now it's time to start the sawing. You can see I've clamped that angled piece of wood securely, mounted up here, mounted up here. I'm gonna put this on. Remember, cedar dust is toxic because of the silicates in it, and I should have been using it when I was drilling. And it didn't occur, so I'm gonna put this on and get started. Oh, this is this is the point of no return. I succeed or fail. Wish me luck. I don't like how much this is flexing up and down, but as soon as I get down to about right here, I'm going to move this over to there. You can see I'm cutting into my shell already. Gotta be careful of that. Wow, really got off there, huh? And I'm well off the line down below. Like, 
eighth of an inch maybe. It's great. Trying to move this. <laughs> I'm hitting it. So Brian, you commented in a video a while back when I first used this that my saw must be dull. And I think it's because it's going so slow. I think what we really see is that I wasn't pressing hard enough. I'm pressing down the downstroke and on the upstroke. Well, it's, I think it's got a good speed right now. This is much faster right now than when I was using the chisel. I'm setting it so I can just see the line that I, uh, the outer line. And also, it's bowed in a bit because I've cut too much of this away. Got to be more careful. This is, this is jumping all around still, wow. I just realized why it's jumping all around. When I'm planing, I'm pushing down. Here, I'm pushing down and pulling up. The pulling up is causing this to move, huh? under the inner line a little bit, but that's going to be turned away, so it's not bad, but I'm glad I caught it. Reads nine minutes on uh, the timer, and that included some setup and stuff. That's way faster than the chisel method. So yeah, Brian, you're right. <laughs> it's also less. It's harder work, which makes sense. <laughs> so before proceeding any further, I wanted to get a good look at it and see if it was success or failure. Uh, we're about. For about here to here, I can visibly see, well here it was up and down, but that around here I can visibly see I was actually bending it out like I wanted to. When I get down to around here where I was touching into my line, not only was I touching into my line, I was starting to go vertical, and that's bad. I corrected, and I can see from here on down, it's bending out. I can actually see my pencil line here, and from here to here, I can see a pencil line. This is the only section where the inner line is obscured. Let's turn it over. Don't worry, I looked already. Lots of gap here, very nice. Down to around here, gets yeah, a little before I noticed, because that's starting, I was starting to go vertical before I went in. My inner line is just visible down to around here and from here to here I can see line here and here so presumably it's right on the edge notice the knot it's still there it's so annoying it's it's gonna go away because that, that'll certainly be trimmed away I call this a success except for one thing you can tell but yeah you can see this really suffered uh, I might just go over to the, the miter saw and cut it the way I made this was I just took a, I don't have one here, but it, one of my shims and I put it on the miter table, the compound miter saw, and put the shim under it and went up and then the lid was vertical so I just cut this. I just might run that through again because I'd rather start with a good line. So it was a lot harder to 
cut that jig than before because it was smaller and it was sketchy clamping to begin with. So I got another 2x4, cut off a section, and made the sketchy cut. And I'm not happy with it. Uh, I'm going to really try hard to not damage this one, but we'll see. You also notice that I'm cutting this side again. You think I'd be cutting down here, but that was just too awkward. I guess I could have stood there and done it. It was just it just it, it just felt really awkward. So I flipped the piece over, took it back to the bench, and drew a third set of, uh, of lines. I'm going to turn off the camera now. You don't need to see me saw It's pretty boring. Well, I wish I had run from the beginning, because since this is the edge of the blade that goes out to the edge of the wood, I didn't have that nice end to come in on. It's actually proving really difficult to saw down here, because I'm sort of having to hold the blade against it, and it wants to fall out. And I need my mask. Just now, starting to leave some behind. Just realized something. Why am I holding it here? Here's a blade. That's stupid. <laughs> it was time to move the clamps anyhow. I noticed that this jig is surviving far better than the other one did. It's just slight scrapes on it. And I think there's two reasons. One is that I'm being more careful. The second is that this is just some white wood. The other was a piece of scrap cedar I had sitting around and the white wood is of course slightly harder. But I'll reclamp and continue, but I'll keep the camera off. <laughs> so now we have half the taper cut on a taper, sorry, blade shape cut. And <laughs> Brian, I must say, I really gotta thank you for the advice you gave me oh, a million videos ago about learn to use the saw, because that is so much faster than, uh, than the chisel method. The chisel method, frankly, was a lot of fun, but it was, it was wicked slow. And uh, this is better. Uh, I like my little jig. I can see my line here on this side, and I can see actually both lines here. So I've got maybe at places probably a what? These are sixteenths, three eighths to, to trim, but I will get a a plane to those and get that trimmed down. Still got to figure out what to do about this, and uh, I got some ideas. So this tool here is known as a coping saw, and it's used for cutting intricate pieces according to Wikipedia. It's not my father in laws I know that, because it's all rusty and stuff. The blade looks mostly clean, and I probably should go to the hardware store and buy a new one, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna... Oh, and I put the, the piece in here with the vertical side, not the slanted side, as my guide. I, probably don't need that, but I'm trying to be super careful here. There's no point in using this slanted side because this blade is so flexible. You know, the, the guide's not going to help me at all, so I'll just... Oh, I, I cut a new line a sixteenth away, so I'll follow that new line. One thing cool about a coping saw is that this blade rotates, so I have the teeth on this side, so I'll be cutting like this, so that way this won't get in the way. Yeah, this cuts on the pull, not the push. <laughs> this does not make a straight line. <laughs> this is pathetic. It's really slow going. I'm gonna go up to the hardware store and get a blade. So I have this short Japanese saw, which doesn't have a spine on the back, so 
I gave that a couple tries, and it seems to be okay, but of course the blade is much thicker, and I, it's hard to get in there. So I came in at an angle and tried to get a chunk out. We'll see how it goes. Cuts much faster, but it's so hard to get in there. I think I'll have to use this to get the, the piece out. Okay, there we go. So I cut a little cut a little wedge out. Now I can get the big blade in. Yeah, I'm not wearing the mask. This is raising so little dust. I'm, that's so uncomfortable. I probably should though, right? And I'm going below my line. I'm gonna stop now and Try and think of plan C because I'm, I'm I have no control with that, and I don't want to blame the tool. We're gonna to blame the carpenter because I don't know what I'm doing. So you can see here the part that I used the coping saw on and, and the Japanese saw some, I'm not sure which was which. And then down here where I started using the, uh, I think it's a cross cut saw, I'm not sure. Uh, and this is just wonderful. You know, it's not, it's not fine furniture, it's not gotta fix that, but this is just so bumpy, but I, I gotta get in here somehow. And I'll probably do the same on this side, use the coping saw for the actual minimum I can have. It must be nicer if I had a, a stiff saw with a blade not as tall. So now I'm just going to cut the shoulder here. I did not have to do that on this side because I used the drill. And I don't know, there's a lot of work for the drill. <laughs> I'm probably not going to do that. We'll see how it goes. I'll come in a quarter inch away from my line. In case it jumps, of course it jumps. Uh, Notice, you know, I'm holding the saw at a, like sort of a normal angle. I've already hit my loom line, so I got to go vertical now, which is hard. for the coping saw to get in. That's ugly. But just needs to be cut away. Oh, this is curious because I got the blade on this side and I want to be cutting from that end. So I'll rotate it. This side's harder. No, no, there it goes. Good. That was stuck before. Notice how I did that? I just turned it around. Ah, that's gross.
this time. I want to try it without, and I certainly should not be going on the line. I should be going this side of the line, so I gotta rethink that. I gotta leave a lot of space to see on the line. This is actually easier than the block because you can see the line, except for the dust. <laughs> what is going on? Are they bind it up with something? Wow. I don't know what it is, a sawdust fell in there or something? Wow, exciting. Safety third. The good news is they come in three packs. And of course this is what I should have done to free the blade. After the, the blade broke on the coping saw I checked and there was enough room to get the, uh, the bigger saw in and I cut that down. What's curious is that for the first half or so, I was doing really good. And then I started concentrating on putting the blade away just in case it would touch the bottom line. And you can see just how much it, uh, it got away from the line. And I'm lucky it got away from the line, not dug into the line, but who knows. So the next step is to clean these up a little bit. These sides are going to be easy. Let's get a good plate on them, take them down to the inner line, not the outer line. That would be fun. This is going to be a little more challenging. Uh, I might use the rasp, might use a spoke shave, I'll use all sorts of things and see what happens. I've got a little baby plane out now. This is a Stanley 110 and it's a low angle plane. The blade's coming in at a much lower angle than the, the other plane. I don't know why you'd want to use a low angle or a high angle. I'm just jamming on it because I've never used it before. I got a nice narrow piece here so I don't need the, the weight of the bigger planes. I want to take this face down, make it smooth, take it down to my line. And I can see, I'm going to be very careful on both sides to not cross the line. There's places on this side where it's well above and places on this side where it's close. So it's got to be careful. Let's see if it works. nicely. I'm doing here because this is the highest spot. This guy this guy's a joy to work with. It's really nice. One knob here for adjustments. I'm not sure. Probably you just, it's probably not adjustments. It's probably a uh, tighten and loosen and I slide the blade in and out. It doesn't have all those complex things the uh, the bigger ones have. This doesn't need to be furniture grade. All this is going to happen is I want to use this flat surface and this flat surface to mark the parts where I'll be using the spoke shape to shape the blade. But I want to get it down to the line at least. But this is not critical.
from about here to here, I'm just about perfect on this side. It's little baby steps here. I don't feel like unclamping it. <laughs> uh, but I can show you here, this is the part that I just planed. And you can see just how smooth it is. Now let's go over to here. This is where I use the coping saw, and this is where I use the rough saw. And you can see what a difference. This is fuzzy, it's tacky to the surface, it's bumpy, it's got gouges, and this is, well, if I knew what I was doing, it'd be furniture grade, but I don't, so, but it's nice and smooth. Actually, I wanted to show you one more thing when the camera's over here. This is a real big advantage of this type of clamping table. This happens to be a Black & Decker Workmate, but I guess other people make them. This piece is, you know, an inch and a half thick here and a half inch thick down there, so it tapers in. And these two screws turn independently of each other. So I have it clamped tightly here, have it clamped tightly here, have it clamped tightly here. Really nice. This is, highly recommend getting one of these. Actually, it's better if I just show you. You can see how it's narrow here and thick there. You know, I can move this side independent. So I'll just flip the piece over. Tighten up that lightly. Clamp this guy down. Clamp this guy down. It's all ready to go for the other side now. So the other side, I don't actually have a problem. Remember how I was slipping? This is the first side I cut. And I'm slightly below the line here, and I'm all I'm riding the line here, and here I'm very high on the line, so I gotta be super careful. This side will not finish up as nicely as this side, but that's okay, because all this is for the purpose is drawing, drawing pencil marks on. It's the only reason I'm doing this, plus I enjoy it. <laughs> These sides are really close to the line. I just took a little bit off the top to make it a little less bumpy, just to make it easier to draw. That's the only reason I'm doing that. Okay, now I gotta tackle this part. I wanna... I can't even get this in here. You know, it's... it's spoke shape time. This side is very close to the line except down here, so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. I'm not sure I want to do that. This is where I want to work and I can't. The neat thing is I know this is going to be rounded, so I could just come in like this and do it, but I don't feel like doing that now. I think that's good enough for there. Now this is the one there's huge amounts. You know, I'm touching the line here, I'm slightly under the line here, way above the line here, and this side I'm way above the line the whole time. So. I need to do is cut this corner out and then come in with a chisel or something. But the next step is to shape this, so I'm actually going to punt and do nothing for now. Just call that done for today. That's all I have to work. And the blade stops here, so just. Yeah, the next step is to 
put the shapings on the blade, the pencil marks showing the shapings, and then I'll come out and do a rough shape on it. It'll start looking like a blade. That's going to be fun. Kind of tempted to do it today, <laughs> but no. <laughs> this video is probably going to be 40 minutes long already. Talk to you later, people. Bye. Of course I'm not done. I want to show you the finished piece, finished for today. You can see that it's starting to look like a blade. Narrow here, gets wider there. Thick here, gets narrower there. And we got our loom. And it's funny here because I'm taking you know, half an inch off. But yeah, it's looking kind of nice. The, uh, let's see it right here. That's the knot I was worried about. It looks like I'll probably be able to cut all that away. It might have a, a shallow spot, which I might ignore. I might, I don't know, fill with epoxy or something. But pretty happy with this. I gotta clean up and sharpen my tools, which I might not do because I only use that for a few minutes. So yeah, I'm not gonna sharpen it because I'm not sure to put it back together. <laughs> Till next time.